Liga Chan. A ver. Nice. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is contact form. This is email. Got it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I think we're getting somewhere. All right. Uh, sorry, guys. We, we can hear some of you in the background. If you don't mind, just respectfully, if you can. Um, yeah, don't worry. I'm muting them. All right. Okay. My screen is flickering. So I'm uh, just fixing this right now. Sorry, guys, just the screen started to flicker here. Here we go. Okay, well, now we got this out of the way. Welcome everybody to our July meetup. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful for you spending your Wednesday evening. If you are not familiar with our meetup, we do this every month. So we have it the second Wednesday of every month where we discuss a topic around marketing, marketing automation, just so we can empower the ecosystem to become better marketers. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to build automations to amplify your funnel. We did a funnel session last month. We got some amazing feedback, a lot of participation and a lot of engagement even after the meetup. So everything we're about to do today, we will be making available after the, after the call. We'll probably in a, in a day or so send you an email, including everything in the chat and all the slides. With that being said, I want to request from everybody here to leave your information in the chat. Oftentimes what we do is we hear somebody speak uh, and we would like to connect with them, but we, we lose them once they leave the call. So please write in the chat if you can leave your name, business, email, and LinkedIn, or anything else for that matter. If you have a, you know, a small pitch, um, do so. The chat is transcribed and then we're gonna share it back with everybody. Um, so that would be great. A little background about our community. We're about 20,000 members strong community-wise. These are non-VBOUT essentially um, and VBOUT, but we have a lot more in terms of reach. We are seven years in the making. So those of you who have attended previous meetups, we've been consistent for seven years, month to month, with some breaks here and there during August uh, and the slow, the slow times. Um, we've moved this online 100% since pandemic, and this allowed us to reach more audience and hopefully make um, more, more impact uh, over, over uh, geographies. <clears throat> the agenda for today is going to be general intro, which I'm, I'm doing right now. We'll have the topic of the day, how to build automations to amplify your marketing funnels. Uh, then we'll dive into VBART resources to help you create your own funnels. And finally, we'll do attendees and we'll take questions. Now, I want to make this an engaging session. So during my presentation, please feel free to interrupt, ask questions. We might spill over a little bit, but if everybody's benefiting from this, I'm, I'm here um, for as long as it takes. All right. A little background about myself and VBout. So VBout is a marketing automation stack. What we do is we provide a platform similar to HubSpot, Marketing Cloud, uh, Marketo, or Active Campaign. Uh, we, we differentiate ourselves by providing a very simple interface at a great price with a premium support. We have a lot of different tools within the stack. So we are a marketing stack first and foremost. We let you build landing pages, forms, pop-ups. We, we can also do a lot of lead tracking, build automations. So you can see everything you need to uh, close a lead or capture leads, uh, turn them and nurture them, uh, eventually close and retain. All those are handled through the VBOP platform. 
We also integrate very well with other systems. So we have open APIs, we have connectors, Zapiers, because we know it's the bluff, uh, lifeline of every software. If you have used us before, you're familiar with this, and I'm going to dive a little deeper into our visual builder. This is where we build automations by using our drag and drop interface. It is most of our engineering. And um, we will be discussing a lot of these automations today. Uh, this is where really everything comes, comes to life. We have everything around the lead from where they came from, whether it's a Facebook campaign, specific ad, what is their score where we see on the top and every single touch point as well is being tracked inside Viva. So this is you owning your first party cookie. And this is what we're empowering people using Viva is we want you to take all that tracking, turn it into a solid profile, which you can then send to Facebook for better, better um, ad serve. I won't bore you too much with the interface or the product, but I just want you to understand where we are in the stack, if any of you is confused. If you look at the underkills of the world, these are the MailChimps, which do a great job, but they leave a lot to be desired if you're an advanced marketer, and the overkills, which are bulky, expensive, and often complex, not to mention cost of mortgage uh, on the house. And we are right in the middle. So we are filling that gap, and we are on the right track. So this is us in a nutshell. Any questions? Uh, on us, the product, what we do, happy to take um, the questions. Okay. For those of you who are shy, I will leave a link uh, or George will help me leave a link to our uh, product overview and potentially book in a call with one of our success managers. Um, we, yes. We, we provide a partnership opportunity for agencies and we help agencies literally set up and launch their own platform on Viva. So if you're interested in this, uh, you can click on the link in the chat, which George will be sharing soon. <clears throat> All right, so how many, how many do we have to attend this wise so far? What do we got? Quick check. Elsa, how many attendees? Forty-five. Um, Forty-five so far. Sorry. All right. Oh, great. This is kind of the size that I'd like to, you know, gravitate around. Anything beyond that becomes very overwhelming because I would love to hear your participation questions. So this is actually a great number. Um, Richard. And uh, Bob. Bob is asking, how do you interface with HubSpot CRM? Sure. We have a native connector within Viva which you can configure from us to HubSpot, from HubSpot to Vbout, and you can choose which fields and in some extent what activity to send back. Um, if you don't want to use our native connector, we also have Zapier. They have a free version and a paid version. You can also use Zapier outside of Vbout if this is another way for you to do it, okay? And we we know people like to use the CRM in HubSpot. Um, so if that's, where you're staying with your CRM data, uh, by all means, we can integrate, okay? All right. Any other questions? Yes, we have a question from Olu Fikayo. He's asking how is Vibao different from Oribi? Yeah, I've never personally used Oribi. Obviously, it's a very crowded marketplace. Um, but as I mentioned, we're right there in the middle. So there is, there will be some differentiators from Oribi. Um, in terms of, first, we are a small company with a, with a very product and customer focused culture. So we will work very closely with you. You're not going to have a bot. You're not going to have just, you know, to wait five, six days to get a response. I don't know if that's how Oribi functions or not, but this is kind of the core of our culture. You're getting a very powerful features at an affordable price, premium support, and a growing ecosystem in the marketing automation. And what you'll see in this um, in the following presentation is a lot that will uncover that. Okay. <clears throat> awesome. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do today, guys, I would love to hear your feedback. How many of you is currently building automations for their business? Uh, just a quick drop in the chat. And what we'll do is at the end uh, or after the call, we'll pick one of you who left a comment and we will give you a full build of your automations and how I'm about to break it down to you in this presentation. So if anybody here is interested in getting their funnel built, please leave in the chat if you are currently using or building automations uh, and hopefully you'll get um, our offer for the funnel build out. Not the funnel, but the automation build out. <clears throat> All right, so I got one person says yes. 150 Toastmaster, thank you, Grow. Uh, Dustin, we are building ours right now. Uh, it would help if you can tell us what kind of automation is the one you're focusing on the most. Uh, you can name one if you're building multiple. Okay, Barry looking into it. Uh, linked, linked helper. Um, okay, I'm a brand new, looking to build a client, awesome. Look, build that for a client, great, great. Testing email and vout not using yet. Cool. Keep it coming, guys. Again, any of you who leave a comment uh, on this question, we will pick one of you so we can help you. And my team will jump in there and build your automations for you. Okay. Cool. A lot of you are in the motion. So let's let's dive right into it. <clears throat> I want to take one step back. I know most of you already know what marketing automation is, but for those, those of you who do not know, it's pretty much taking the simple day-to-day -day marketing tasks, whether it's front-facing with the client or internal, and turning them into automated processes to help you with consistency, to help you reach clients better, to help you with metrics, uh, and also to potentially automate your entire cycle, including sales and closing deals. Okay, there's a lot more to unpack here, uh, but automation is really the heart of, you know, time efficiency, consistency, and reaching clients over multiple channels. Hopefully by the end of this presentation, this introduction will, um, will, will make more sense, but automation is, um, is exactly that. Now, a little history of of marketing automation, I won't bore you with facts. I, I just wanna just kind of lay out two phases. Before 2010, most marketing was around branding, affiliate marketing, content, social, PPC, SEO, content. Um, eventually we branched out to inbound community building and community marketing, sales and marketing automation, growth hacking, retargeting. I know there are a lot, lot more, but these are the main categories. And this is kind of the time where things started to shift. Automations are not new. They were being built before, but 2010, we saw this diversion and more needs because lead generation is growing, more companies are coming online and more tools were required. So this is where we saw a boom and the trend of marketing automation start to skyrocket. Um, <clears throat> Now, I wanna get started by also covering basic elements you're here with every marketing automation, okay? Um, one, I wanna talk about triggers. And in the marketing automation world, whether it's VBOT, whether it's HubSpot, whether it's Marketo or ActiveCampaign, it doesn't matter. We refer to triggers as the beginning of an automation. It could be behavior, just as somebody opening an email, clicking on a link, completing an order or abandoning a cart. Maybe you're using a webhook and you're updating API endpoints. This could be joining or filling out a form, right? It could be like a joining an offer, um, that type of stuff. It could be a custom event, like you updated a tag on a customer profile. Somebody looked up a product on your website. Or it could be time-based, meaning it's not waiting for an engagement to happen but it's just running based on a daily schedule, weekly schedule, or a quarterly schedule, okay? Again, there are a lot more to, uh, to triggers, but these are the most common that we see out there. So quick, a quick pause here. Does anyone have any questions on triggers and what triggers are? So I can explain that a little deeper.
Sim, don't forget your arm muted. All right. Uh, don't be shy if you have questions, we are here to help. But understanding those elements of a marketing automation process is really, really key to understand, to knowing how learning how to build them. So this is why I'm taking a little bit of time to um, uh, explain these. All right. The second part is our actions. These are the things that take place once that trigger has been initiated. So I'm going to take an example of somebody filling out a form. That's the trigger filling a form. Now, a certain type of action can take place. So we can send the person an email. We can send them an SMS message, a browser push. We can add them to another list. We can update some values on their profile. Maybe you have a binary one zero. You can have not interested, interested. You can remove them from certain lists if you're doing list, list cleanups. You can push them and move them between automations to do automation handovers. You can use sync to third party, which some people call webhooks, but third party could be a Salesforce sync. It could be an audience on Facebook. Um, so sync to third party actually packs a lot of, lot of power. You can do internal things like notifying your team members of new activities. You can add tags on the profile to do better segmentation. And you can also create internal tasks for your team. So you can see that the actions that are available at your fingertip are not only communicating with the customer, they could actually be internal tasks so you can self-organize and be more efficient, okay? And these are the two types of automation or the branches of automation we talk about are action, um, internal and external automations, okay? I'll take a pause here. Anybody have any questions on this? Uh, yes, Richard John is asking. Okay. What, what volume of inbound? Got it, George. Awesome. I can't. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll read it up. Um, what volume of inbound leads warrants marketing automation? Uh, I've seen companies find success with um, 100, 100 leads in their database and trying to work that database at, as a one to one kind of relationship. Um, and do it very well. But obviously that depends on how much is your sale. But the key is you always wanna create a sustainable lead generation process, lead nurture, so you're not stuck at that low level. So I would say you can start M MA at any given time. Um, but if you want to start seeing solid results for an average order value below a thousand, right? If that's your average order value, I think you need 10,000 plus in your database. That's when you start seeing you know, more conversions, more opens, uh, and potentially more meaningful conversations. Now, if you're more than a thousand price point on average order value, you can go down to five, uh, 1,000 to 5,000 is a good range, okay? Again, I'm not saying you cannot do business and start MA if you have 100 or even 50, but in terms of, you know, testing properly, making and fine tuning your automations, um, you need a little bit of volume, I would say. Does that help? I almost called you Johnny Walker, but um, let's say John Walker. Cool. Any any um, any other questions so far on triggers, actions? All good. <laughs> cool. All right. Let's talk about filters. This is uh, very important as well because you don't want to create just a linear automation. You want to be able to create some sort of a filter for some people. Maybe that you have a sequence asking people to book a call with you and they book the call. How do, they, how do you know they've done that? Maybe you're sending email follow-ups for those who never opened. You wanna add a filter that is checking for email opens, for website visits, for actions or activities so you can pause the automation. So filters are really important to create more efficient, and more accurate automations. And in VBout, it's very easy. We've built them into our arrows. All you have to do, just click on them and you can add as many filters as you want. There are, you can stack filters on top of each other. You can have one filter at a time. But I just want you to look at filters as these deeper conditions to making uh, an automation execute, okay? <clears throat> cool. How are we doing so far? Any questions on filters? 
Uh, Richard, uh, Dustin has a question, but not uh, about filters. Uh, do you want to read it for you or do you I got do it. it? We maxed out at 150 leads per month with a call center and one office person. We're struggling while onboarding HubSpot and not having automation to reach out to leads. Yes, Dustin, and, and this is this is actually when you when you're growing and you know the replacing human you know day-to-day -day tasks with automation will help sometimes they work together maybe you want that salesperson or your sdr to be focused on good quality leads so you can use automations to fine tune instead of 150 leads to get them someone who's a little bit more ahead more interested with a higher score um i know that there's a lot there but Yes, that's exactly a good stage to start uh, bringing marketing automation. <clears throat> uh, filter templates. Um, in VBOT, we let you copy things over. So it's technically, you can call it a template. It's an entire automation. And we have guides uh, also built in. So we don't template the filters per se, but they are properly categorized. And I think I'll, I'll get to show you that in a second. <clears throat> Sure thing, Tony. All right, let's talk about delays. I love delays because they dictate the cadence of how things are sent. If you wanna be aggressive, if you wanna be um, you know, just a little slow in the way you nurture. So delays are important because they space out those, uh, those instances or actions. So from the moment a trigger takes place, you don't have to immediately start things. You can wait a day, you can wait a week. And I've seen people even wait a month to execute things, all right? So you think about delays as this buffer period between the action taking, taken, um, I'm sorry, the trigger and an action or the buffer between two actions executing, okay? So if I would take a step back and imagine myself sending an email to everybody that's coming to my list, every day I'm logging in, sending an email, two days later I'm logging in, sending a follow-up, that takes a lot of human power. So this is the essence of automation. <laughs> okay. um, finally, we have workflows. And workflows is exactly what you're looking at. And automation, in VBOT at least, is a canvas. And inside that canvas, you can execute multiple workflows. This is a great example of a workflow that is branching. So this is a branch, it's going up and going down. I didn't make it too complex, but you can add filters. And a person opening email can go in two routes, perhaps. One route on the top with a whole bunch of actions to follow and one route on the bottom, okay? So that, that's what constitutes a workflow is that entire build out and an automation can branch out or it can be just one linear line, okay? So this is, this is a core of, or the elements of a marketing automation engine. I can hear, yeah, I probably I've seen in the past so many different jargons and things thrown out, but overall from the hundreds of platforms that we've tested, these were the things that we've settled on and are more common. Any questions? <clears throat> I got yeah, one have from one. John. Yep, I got it, George. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the chat on, on my other screen. Oh. Can we have an API input or output within a flow rather than at the end? Um, you can have an API output anywhere in the middle. So let's say before you send an email, you want to send an API call to a webhook or an endpoint. You can do it anytime in the flow. The system doesn't care. Okay. Um, and when you feed it, you can feed back to the system an API call. So maybe you're updating from your own portal, a value on the record, right? Like maybe you're changing interested to not interested because you have your own chat component. You can call this out. And the moment the, the system would execute this stage, let's say, and it pulls up that record, if the record is already updated, then it should execute just fine. Okay. Um, I don't know if I answered your question, uh, uh, John. John, drink water to be specific. Okay. Uh, do the emails come out of the VR platform? 
maybe a different way to ask, can they sync with my Office 365? And no automation, they go out from Vivo. They don't go out from your uh, Office 365 because obviously when you sync your Office 65 or Gmail or any of these uh, you know, branded business apps, you are limited the number of emails you can send out at bulk. And with automations, if you're starting small, maybe you're sending 20 a day, but imagine you're sending a thousand an hour, all right? And that's where you're gonna have problem with Office, you're gonna have problem with Gmail. This is why in the automation sequence, we don't do it from, um, from your own SMTP of choice. Um, I'm talking about inboxes, but we have some plans to perhaps do it with a little bit of a buffer and some trips. We, we actually, uh, we've discussed that in, in our last quarter. Cool. All right. Well, let's let's dive into some of the build outs here, guys. Um, how are we doing in terms of cadence? Am I going too fast, too slow? Audio is good. Quick check. All right. Yeah. Good. Cool. All right. Well, let's break down uh, automations. Actually, one more step here. Automations versus funnel. This is a question we get all the time. Um, and last session was about funnels and how to build them, the framework. And we shared a whole bunch of funnels that are really relevant to you guys. Um, a lot of people ask us, what is the difference? The difference is that this is a funnel where you have people flowing from, let's say, an ad to a landing page. Once they get to the landing page, they get to the value page or whatever you have on the thank you. Then you invite them to book an appointment on a calendar. And then you get them through a whole bunch of processes. Automation is technically plugged into every single point. This is an automation right here, okay? It includes this, and this is another automation. So automations are technically elements of a funnel, okay? You have landing pages, you have forms, you have all that, those things happening. Automation usually takes place when you have the lead in the system and you can start sending them content or doing some internal cleanup, okay? In this particular example, I won't dive too much into the funnel, but somebody filled out a form. We send them a thank you. No booking was made a few days later to speak to a consultant. We send them a case study um, and an offer for free consultation. No booking was made. We had an SDR follow-up. So we assigned a task to an SDR via automation, right? All this automated. No booking was, was made. Maybe we can push them to a retargeting campaign with some case studies. So now that person can start seeing on the right side of the screen, some retargeting ad. Finally, we can do some phone and a, a SMS reminders. If they booked their calendar, we can add them to the CRM and so on, okay? So again, automations are part of a funnel. Um, and a funnel can be strictly one automation or it could be combination of, okay? <clears throat> Cool. Who we have here uh, is the funnel, in this case, the workflow. Um, no, Sharon, in this case, the funnel is a combination of items. We usually take an inventory of what this funnel consists of. So we map it out. We can write it out uh, on a paper, on a whiteboard. And then we say we're going to need, in this case, three landing pages. We need a retargeting pixel dropped in on a landing page. We need a browser push prompt that shows up on the thank you. And that we need to build two types of automations, this one and this one, okay? So it's an element of the, of the funnel, okay? All right, thanks, Sharon. Any other questions? Anybody confused between the differences of between funnels and automations? Did you answer Sharon, Richard? Yes, just there. Yeah. All right, let's see if I can. All right, does VBOT have landing pages too? Yes, we do. Pretty much every element you see here, except managing the ad itself can be done through VBOT. The calendar booking component is available, the landing page, the forms, uh, the browser push emails, pretty much everything can be managed through VBOT. <clears throat>
cool, cool. Uh, show ink, here we go. All right, let's dive into it. We have four stages of the lead. Everybody's familiar with this, guys, nothing new. Uh, we capture the lead, we nurture the lead, we close the lead, we retain the lead. I don't care how people refer to it. Is it a funnel? Is it a wheel? Is it a pyramid? It doesn't matter for me. The, the stages of the buyer, the lead are pretty much timeless, right? They, they will always be the same. You meet them, you make sure that you build trust, you close the lead, and hopefully they become a repeat customer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down our automations based on these four categories just to make it a little bit easier. They don't have to be. And I have a lot of people coming in and they just start building things because they have one need or one requirement. Um, but I'll just categorize them as such. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, dive in. What I'm going to do right now is I'll pull in my VBOT screen on my side. So I can show you how to build under the capture three different workflows. One for content nurture, one of the most popular ones. Another one is web push nurture, which a lot of people don't, don't use because they don't even know what web push is. And then I have contact tag automation. This one is really important. It's because it allows you to create better segmentation overall with your customers. So let me go ahead and pull in my VBout and show you how to build it. So if you're not using VBOT today, it's okay. What I'm about to share with you could be applied in any platform with, of course, minor tweaks. We might have some advanced options, um, but if you are using VBOT, this is actually a great tutorial for you. I want you to know that we have automation templates that you can start from. George and the team has put a whole bunch of them together. So if you want to get inspirations, you want to look up some templates, just like you do with landing pages. We have a lot of them at your fingertips, okay? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start from scratch and go inside the automation. <clears throat> okay. All right, guys, this is the canvas in the middle. We have triggers and we have actions on the left. Triggers are what I discussed before, what begin the automation and the actions are the sequence of things that takes place. The delays are right here and the filters can be obtained uh, uh, after. Um, so what we're gonna be doing now is the content nurture. <clears throat> now typically the content nurture starts by either having your own database in place or by having a form on the landing page and people need to fill it in to enter the landing page. Did I miss anything else? And maybe an API connected? Please feel free to amplify what I'm about to say. Because <clears throat> some of you here, I know they, they are very active with automation, so they might have some ideas. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a very basic trigger, very popular one called joint. The, the joint trigger is filling in a form. Okay, but what we did in VBout, we built a back, back in time option, which applies to historical data. So this means that if you have somebody that joined your newsletter in the past or only in the future, if you put yes, that means uh, only moving forward. Uh, sorry, go in the past, moving forward. If you put no, only moving forward. And here you have a list of all your different buckets of subscribers. Now we have a lot in VBOT. So in your case, you might not have as many, um, but lists are technically Excel files or buckets of contacts. So I'm just gonna assume I have a newsletter on my website and I'm, I'm capturing people of people's interest, okay? And the way you can capture people is either through pop-ups, side messages, forms, landing pages, and so on. So this is at the absolute basic level is I dropped in a trigger called fill in a form and I specified which list I'm targeting. And I wanna go back in time because I have already 500 people on there on them to get pushed through that same automation, okay? So far so good. 
All right, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch to actions. What do I want to do after the, I, I execute this? This gets executed once I publish it, right? So nothing is happening right now. It's just sitting there as a standalone action. If I, if I publish and save, nothing will take place, okay? What I'll do, I will add a little bit of a delay or I can simply drop in a send email. And that could be the thank you or the welcome email. Okay, you'll notice how I link them up with an arrow because that dictates the connection between the trigger and the action, all right? Now, normally when I'm nurturing people, I'm not gonna go too deep into what kind of content to send. I'm just gonna assume that I have very solid foundation for my uh, content, which I'm channeling through the email. All I have to do is just add a delay and then add another email, add a delay, and then another email. And I can continue building this for as long as I want, okay? <clears throat> now, the second step will be to start, uh, the third step in this case is to start dictating the cadence. Now, there's a big debate here. You can do once a day, you can do twice a day, which in my opinion is too aggressive. Or we can do once every two days. This is going to depend industry on industry. Um, I like to be a little bit aggressive if somebody just joined by sending them more emails, you know, strike while the iron is hot. So I'm just going to do one day delay and I'll specify the exact time. This is really important because if you don't specify the time, the email will be sent um, in 24 hours. But what I'll do, I usually just try to throw things off by adding like a 708. So it's not time on the clock, okay? And that's it. These are some extra options where you can execute on a specific day in the week if you wanna skip, let's say, uh, Saturday. Uh, or you can even hold off. So you can execute this only between, you know, like a 6 a.m. and a 7 p.m., let's say. Okay. So if you're doing SMS, this is a great option because you don't want to SMS people after 7 p.m., right? It might be, um, you know, phone, phone alert and they're in the middle of something. So that's an option. Again, you don't have to use it, but if you want to be cautious with this, you can do that. So you see, guys, delays can, can pack a lot of power. You can control down to the minute and the day and even the, the hour, all right? <clears throat> Uh, I usually finish up all my delays. That's just the way I, <laughs> I like to build it. But if you want to go through it one step at a time, that's totally fine. Okay. I have a question, I think. Is there a way to easily yes. move funnels from Crick funnels to VBout? Um, that's, that's a good question. Unfortunately, the landing pages need to be built. The logic is not hard to redo, um, but there's no you know, process set that just like a wizard or anything like that, um, unfortunately. <clears throat> cool, and Ben is asking, to clarify a one day delay that triggers at seven, which triggers the following day at that specific time. Um, okay. If I specify the 7.08 a.m. and somebody signed up the day before at 8 p.m., technically the system should execute it next day not 24 hours, but just when the day rolls over at 7.08 in the morning, okay? <clears throat> cool. All right. Now here I can, once I've built or set up my delays, and by the way, guys, the, the whole nurture sequence can be as long as you want, obviously dictated by how much content you have. But uh, if I want to stop here for, for the time being, that's, that's fine. But then I'm going to start building my email. Now, the way the email, there's a whole email design wizard. Uh, but I just want to touch on one thing. You can either do a very basic email that looks and feel like it's going up from your inbox, and we built an interface for that. Or you can do it with a full-blown design editor. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you an example. This is an email that looks... And designed, there's a center, 
and all of that into it, um, everybody will definitely know that it was designed. But then we can do another one, which is, um, I don't know, reminder. George, I think you've set up some of these. Which one is, um, is a naked HTML? Yeah, I'm just remembering. Can you go up, uh, Richard, to the top? Okay. Maybe review email. We have the, we have the app sumo. Okay, you can yeah. This is one of the examples. Okay, so it looks and feel as it was like no no boundaries to it or anything like that. So you see right here, th these are the two different emails, either naked HTML or fully designed. So you might want to, you know, look into what format you want to um, deploy. I think automation, in my opinion, I really like the one-to-one -one conversations and a naked HTML. They're also easier to configure, manage, but of course, don't forget to put on the bottom the unsubscribe option, your address, your business, because you want to be 100% spam compliant, okay? And this is it, guys, for the nurture. Very simple, any questions on this? There's a question from Dustin. Am I building all my emails, forms, and landing pages in HubSpot? No, you're doing it in VBot, Dustin. We have landing pages, we have forms, we have emails. Everything's being done in, in VBot. You don't need HubSpot for, for running your marketing, okay? Can emails be sent from different addresses, example members, info? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I'll show you something cool. We created a a variable on the from email. So what you can do in the from reply to, and even the BCC, this is where you can make carbon copy of your emails. Uh, you can actually add um, a short code. So you can have a short code that's, that's like the name of the agent and the email of the agent and insert it inside your um, inside your reply to from email. So you can have one email and you can have hundreds of salespeople uh, and the emails can be going out from the associated salesperson on that lead, okay? I mean, this is advanced stuff, guys. I don't want you to get too, com too confused with this, uh, but just know the, the how, how things can get in terms of automation. So instead of sending an email from, you know, 100 sales team members, you can have one automation, one email, and all you have to do is just maintain your database with the proper corresponding salesperson, okay? Um, okay, um, we're getting some, some questions in terms yeah. of is a CRM built in as well. We have a soft CRM, guys. It's not a full-blown CRM. I don't wanna get too much sidetracked on this, but um, we call it a pipeline manager. You can use it for CRM. You can use it for anything you want. And we have people using it for CRM, assigning it to sales team members and managing it as such, okay? We don't have chat for landing pages uh, for the time being, but we are looking at the chat component. And which version does this email automation work from? Pro Enterprise. This works for any level you're on. There's no differentiation here. All right. Cool, cool. Let's... Uh, erase this and we can build something else. The second one is web push nurture. Now, who of you here is not familiar with web push? I'm, I'm all ears. <clears throat> all right, um, not familiar. Okay, love it, love it. Um, bring in education to those who can benefit. I. I think um, browser push is one of those channels that's not well utilized. You've definitely went to a website and you've seen um, any of these me messages showing up on the top saying, this website would like to send you push notifications. All right. You can implement all of this in VBOT. We have a lot of documentations on it. It literally takes one minute to get it set up, one minute. But in essence, what we can do here, uh, I'm gonna just filter out to see browser push notifications only, okay? This is an example. Instead of sending an email to somebody, what I'm doing is I'm sending them something like this. Can you guys see it? 
How about now? Do you guys see it now? Yeah. Okay. So you guys can deploy these type of messages that gets delivered to your subscriber's browser, not an email, not a phone, not a mobile notification. It's literally just the browser ID and this gets sent to them and they could click on it to go to a destination article. So this is what a web push notification is. Um, there's a little bit more to the technology, which I won't dive too much into, but if you think of an email as a subject line, content, sender, this is email super light because all you have is a subject line, one graphics, some cases you can do two, but it doesn't work on all browsers. And you can have a CTA along with two lines um, of description. That's it. Super easy to set up. <clears throat> all right. And if you're wondering how that works, why not? Let me show you. <laughs> when you set up your website tracking in Vbout, what we give you is we give you an option to activate the browser push. Make sure this is on. So that's step one. All right. Step two is we give you settings, browser push settings with the file you need to upload. So download this file, upload it to your root directory and you're pretty much ready to, to apply or send browser push. Sorry guys, we have a lot to cover so I will speed through uh, the rest. But what I'm building right now is a web push notification. The way we do this the trigger is always the beginning. It is also joined, right? So joining is not only for forms, it's also for push domains. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see all your setup push, push domains right here. So now you're telling Viva, the moment somebody say, says yes to browser push, and I can go back in time, I want you to start sending a browser push notification message one. I want you to wait two days, send them browser push notification two, and continue the same exact setup I showed you in the email, okay? The only difference is that this is not using email, this is using browser push technology, okay? How simple is that? <clears throat> Perfect. All right, so if all good, no questions. I can move on to the third, the third part uh, of the capture which is contact tag automation. I love tagging. Most people don't use it. I don't know why, but tagging is the ability to add things on the go labels on top of the lead. So you can do things such as segmentation, deliver a message only to those who have that tag. And you can even trigger things when a tag is added. So I'll give you an example. I can add what we call custom event. And I can have a listener waiting for a tag to be added. Let's say the moment I add five coupons redeemed as a tag, I'm going to go ahead and send this person an email. Okay. Very easy. And if I am to look at my contact records, I'm just going to randomly pick one here. <laughs> So if I go into my profile right now, or the client profile on the right side, if I add five coupons redeemed, that five coupon redeemed right here will automatically trigger this automation, okay? Not only that, I can also wait and then remove a tag from a profile, or I can even add a tag to a profile. So I don't have to manually do it. <clears throat> a lot of people use it when people attend events, they could put a tag on their profile. When they actually make purchases, they become a customer, they can label them as customer, abandoned cart, label them as abandoned cart. And these things will communicate with each other. I can literally have five of these workflows right now, all talking to each other. So workflow number one will deliver a tag to workflow number two. And you can, you can do some workflow stacking based on, on tags, <clears throat> okay? So I can do another custom event, listen to this tag, and then fire out another automation. 
This is a little bit more advanced, guys, but I just want you to see the level of how flexible you can build automations and how creative you can get. So not only you can impress your team, but also you can build things for your clients that you can charge premium on, all right? Any questions on tagging? Did it miss? Can you have a tag with a value? So if a value is above five, you do something. You can do it on a field. So if I have a numbers field added in database, all you have to do is just click on the arrow. This is where filters come to play. And now I will add a filter based on that field. So if the field is, um, I'm just gonna have to choose, um, I can't think of something right now. Let's say full name is greater than five, okay? I know full name is not the right field, but assuming you have that custom field, you can add it as an error, okay? So tags or maybe and fields are interchangeable, but the way tags are, are very fluid, very flexible. You can add them, move them on the go. Fields reside on the list on a, uh, on a, on a contact level. Mm -hmm. okay. And I think Richard, uh, what can be done in addition to what John mentioned is the lead scoring thing. When we say greater or less than five or 10 or 15, for example, it can be added as a lead scoring a condition. Yeah, if we, if we add a, if we can add a tag, we can create a scoring system and tell the scoring system, um, I want you to wait for somebody's tag to be added in that five, exactly. So you can create your own scoring uh, ecosystem here. <clears throat> cool. Awesome, awesome. So this is the first level, guys. We have a lot more we can do in the capture. I wanna move on to the second stage, which is nurture. This is where we can do guided onboarding. We can do retargeting from email. This is really cool. And we can even do lead scoring automation. So let me show you how you can do these three. Um, just, uh... All right, so let's begin with lead scoring automation. This is when someone le reaches a specific score. Let's say the score of 100, okay? I know there's a lot to learn about lead scoring. We've actually done a session on Meetup around this. But let's assume zero is a new lead, 100 is a perfect lead, and anything above 100 is retention because they're repeat customers. I can do triggers on custom events. So when somebody's midway to becoming a perfect lead, let's say is in the decision phase, they're trying to make a decision because they have a score of 70, I can send them a special email. Or I can even nudge my team. So now I can tell my team, hey, this lead just reached that score. I want you to go ahead and do an outbound call. I can even assign a task to myself. So these are event-based, custom events, based on lead statuses or lead scores. Very, very important and very cool. Okay. <clears throat> so many of you are familiar with lead scoring, but those who are not, George, maybe you can put a link to our lead scoring session if you have it handy. So anybody can, can watch how lead scoring work works. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, guys, we do daily training twice, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Uh, we talk about lead scoring, we share the framework. So if you wanna learn more about it, George will leave a demo uh, link so you can uh, sign up. Um, it's an amazing feature. I, I have agencies specialize in lead scoring and they charge premium price to set it up, run it, manage it, and build these types of automations. All right, I have guided onboarding. This is very similar to the nurture. However, it might require some sort of a trigger. That trigger could be signed up, filling out a form. You just need to tell us that this is a person that requires that type of onboarding. This is why we can use API calls or you can do daily batch upload, Zapier, whatever you like, uh, but it works very similar. The way I recommend doing them is I'm just gonna use the joined meaning they may be signed up to your, to your platform if you're SaaS or something else. I can send them day one an email. But what I can do also, I can send them SMS. So now I'm not only doing emails because I want you to think omni-channel. 
email is 20% of your open rates, right? SMS will take your open rates sometimes above 60% if you have the proper SMS opt-in, okay? And I can even do the Christmas tree uh, is what I call it, uh, Christmas uh, deco uh, automation where I can go ahead and build a whole bunch of onboarding delivered over three channels, email, SMS, browser push, email, SMS, browser push again, okay? And this onboarding is exactly what we use in VBAO to send you those awesome tips in the first few days of your signup. And our clients have deployed them every single time with success. Um, very easy to build, delivered over three channels. If the person is not uh, on browser push prompt, that means they didn't consent or did not provide the phone, no need to worry, you can just deliver the email, okay? <clears throat> So this is the guided onboarding. Any questions on this, guys? All right. Another one is email retargeting. So the way we use this is let's assume you have a list. It's your client's list or maybe a list that you've accumulated over time. And you're trying to do some sort of an email activation. The person didn't come to your site. They didn't do anything uh, to engage with you yet. But you've sent an email to just test the water to see if they're interested, they've opened. We can actually have an email open trigger. This one is listening to an email. And the moment somebody opens that email, so let's say this one, what I can do is add them to a third party. This is where I can connect my Facebook and my AdWords, create a custom audience there and send that lead to that custom audience, okay? I can even remove that lead from that custom audience. So I just want you to have that mindset of creating retargeting doesn't only have to come when somebody come to the site and maybe you don't wanna just upload everybody because some of them might not be interested, but those who click can be retargeted even if they don't click on the link, sorry, those who open. Uh, even if they don't go to your site and they don't get cookied, we can actually add them to a retargeting campaign. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Uh, we have a question. Sorry if this was covered early. Ability to take personalized content and embed it into website directly. You can do it on our landing pages, but not on your website for the time being. Okay. So in landing pages, we can allow certain variables to be passed based on the record okay all right guys we have two more stages um it's being looked at uh, personalized content block is something that we're looking at it's not going to be this year that i guarantee um but potentially the next year i've seen a platform that is doing this with div tags yes there are many ways to do it uh, eric but um, it's not something that we have it built in the system. <clears throat> All right, we have now the, the close phase. This is where you can do sales pipeline automation, okay? You can do e-commerce automation and send out renewal reminders. Now, mind you, in the close phase, if you have any triggers passed back to us, like if somebody signed up and when the renewal date is about to expire, these are gonna be key to send renewal reminders. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the sales pipeline automation as the first step. All right, so the way we do or we work with sales pipeline, the trigger at this stage can be joined, can be completed in order, opened an email. I'm not gonna to focus too much on this, the trigger itself, because it could be anything. So I'm just gonna consider the join, somebody maybe downloading a white paper as an entry level for a sales automation process. Um, what I can do right now when somebody joins that list, I can go ahead and create a task and assign that task to somebody on the team, okay? Very simple, very basic. Uh, I can use some short codes as well. Like I can put somebody's company name 
inside, inside the description of the task or the name of the task. I can assign it to George. I can use whichever pipeline I have and I have plenty and put it in a specific stage, maybe consideration. And then here I can say, follow up with this lead. So imagine taking the absolute basic um, automation, uh, uh, I'm sorry, manual work of when somebody fills out a, a form, I want you to go into the CRM and add them to the CRM. You can do something like this and literally just automate the process. So your sales team, your associates, support will be waking up every day with tasks already assigned to them, okay? You can do a lot more such as adding tags, notifying teams, synchronizing to third party. But in essence, this is where, what constitutes um, a, a sales automation. Some people go the route of filtering because they have on the form qualifying fields. For example, I'm asking people, um, what geography are you from? Or what service you're interested in? So if you're collecting these at the detailed lead level, um, I can go ahead and just create filters uh, accordingly and then assign them to someone else, okay? This is an example of somebody attending a training on Demio. I can create a task and assign it to someone so they could follow up with that lead, all right? Cool. I have after that the other one, which is pretty cool, the e-commerce. The e-commerce itself, I can think about a dozen dozens of automations to trigger, but it does require in VBout some sort of a setup, um, which is installing your plugin and sending us the orders and the add to cart action. We have out of the box plugins for Shopify, WooCommerce and Magento, but if you're running any other systems, we have an open library for it, okay? But I can do things like this. When somebody completes an order, I can send them a, th a confirmation email I can wait a day and then send them an upsell email, okay? And I'm using email, but please keep in mind, you can actually do SMS confirmation, okay? You can even do web push confirmation. And after one week, <clears throat> what I can do right now is send a review request if I know my product will be delivered in a week time. And I can even request a review uh, for an incentive a couple of weeks down the road, okay? So this is where you can build these sort of cadences and get really creative with it. But the most important part of it is the trigger itself is completing an order, okay? The abandoned cart worked very similarly like the completed order, except the person did not finish the process. And you can configure this to function in any way you want. You can add a delay like 30 minutes because you don't want to send emails directly if somebody does not purchase. Um, so give them about a couple of hours because if they don't, uh, you might want to send them a reminder. I've seen people get very creative with this where they do a 365 days anniversary. And in VBOT, we have something called renewal order. So if you have a product that includes a renewal date, maybe you're doing every three month ref refills. Um, we can create a trigger based on these renewal dates that sends emails with the product details for them to renew, okay? This is an advanced option, but if, you are, if you're an e-commerce shop and you're running those types of um, kind of refill reminders, uh, it's a great way for you to use expiry date products. And you can see we have like certain date filters here. <clears throat> Any questions on e-commerce? It's a whole different, we can spend an hour on it. <laughs> We're good? Everyone's yes. good? Um, you can copy yes. automations between accounts. If you're an agency, John, absolutely. So let's say I build this, I like what I did and I wanna copy it over to one of my clients if an agency, I can go ahead right here and I can say copy to account. Now it doesn't copy the content of the emails and some of the filters might be empty because you need to set them up. But yes, the entire shell and the logic can be copied over, okay? 
All right, what do we got next? <clears throat> Renewal reminders, I covered these here um, as well. So if you're sending those emails, uh, whether it is a product that's renewing or whether it's a service, it doesn't matter. You can either capture it as a date field. As long as it's date field is very, very important because date fields have date and comparison. So you can do within 30 days, after 30 days. Don't make the mistake of using a text field and expecting to be applying renewal reminders because it's just not going to work, okay? So these are fall under the close phase. Any questions before I move on to the last phase? <clears throat> All right. Talking about retention, there's a birthday automation, sunset cleanup policy, and lifetime. All right. So in terms of the birthday automation, this also requires you having the birthday of your customer or your client. As long as you have it, all you got to do is just create what we call the time-based automation. Okay. Let me just remove these. With time-based automation, you have an e trigger running every day. I'm going to do recurrent. I'll make it run every day at, I mean, starting today. And I'm going to choose my client list, okay? Active clients. And then I'll add a filter right here that, uh, let's say I have a birthday. <clears throat> at a birth. And now what I can do is, is after exact days, let's say 30 days from today. So if somebody's birth date is in the next 30 days or 30 days exactly from today, I can go ahead and send them an email, send them an offer or something like that. So this is how you run this. It runs every day. If today's my turn, because my birthday is 30 days from uh, you know, June, July 14th, then this will easily apply. Again, SMS, retargeting, assigning it to somebody to call them, and eventually we'll have postcards, so you can send them a postcard um, as well, okay? <clears throat> Questions? All right. Let's um, have two more here, guys. Thank you for your patience. Is this helpful, by the way? Are you guys finding this valuable? A little feedback in the chat will definitely help. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, all right, let's talk about sunset policy. A lot of people are just, you know, volume based. They just want to send out emails to the same list over and over. However, <clears throat> I highly recommend having a plan for those who are not engaging with your brand. Maybe you want to give them a little bit of an, an ultimatum, an option to get less frequent emails from you. Um, so, so really, you, you have to think, unfortunately, how to take those unengaged users and, and not be sending them emails because it impacts your reputation. People who have a plan, maybe you have a segment of your customers that are never opened. They have their own bucket. We call them an audience. And if you buy it super easy, all I got to do is just go to my contacts, audience, and I can create an audience of unopened uh, or never opened emails. I can add a new condition and I can tell the system, give me a list of everybody in my database that never opened any email. <laughs> and now I have a list of everybody who I did not open. <clears throat> okay. Um, super simple. And then what I can do here, if I want, I can add what I call join trigger and that audience that I created. Okay. I can actually apply uh, an entire automation to be sent to them. Okay. Actually, it's, uh, it's not under the join, I'm sorry, it's under the specific date. So this one includes audiences right here, All right? So anybody that is unengaged, if they're coming from unopened, 
I'm just going to choose randomly somebody right now who didn't open an email. What I can do is unsubscribe them directly if I want. By, and the way I do that is I add them to what I call the suppression list. So suppression list is a list of people who I should never email moving forward. So by doing that, anybody who belongs to that audience will actually get added to the suppression list. If I want to be a little bit more lenient and give them options, I can send them an email and say, hey, you haven't engaged with us for a while. Uh, if you'd like to stay in touch, here's a link. Do another follow-up a week later. And if they don't do anything after 30 days, then you can go ahead and just suppress them. That's another way to do a sense of policy. That's how we're doing it, right, George? <clears throat> yes. Something similar to this, okay. So we, we are doing a, a lot of cleanup and this is kind of what we're doing. Everybody who never opened, we're sending them an email. If they take action, we have a couple of filters here. Um, if they took action that we stop, if they don't take action, we send them a second. If nothing happened, we suppress them, okay? <clears throat> any questions on this, guys? Uh, sunset policy is actually as important as any other automation. We have a question from Eric. Sure. Uh, may have missed it, Sue, but can you tie into Google Suite for content sync? Sharp Spring was free up by sync. Um, not yet, Eric. Uh, we we are looking to segment and potentially directly into Google Suite. I, I don't have an exact timeline on this though. We have a lot kind of we're discussing internally and our roadmap is always shifting based on priorities. Uh, but I'll definitely see how PySync can be an option as well. Um, but PySync is, is part of HubSpot right now, I think, right? Yes, here we go, sorry, <laughs> you, you did say it, okay. Now, if any of these are supported via Zapier, we can probably just do it via Zapier as a fallback. <clears throat> cool. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Eric. These are awesome questions. Okay, last but not least, guys, we have a lifetime value. And the lifetime value, this is part of the retention phase as well. That means when somebody reaches a specific amount of purchases. Now, there are two ways to do it. If you've deployed our e-commerce, we have under the custom event trigger. And by the way, custom event trigger packs probably about 20 additional triggers, but we don't want to clutter the left interface. So if I look up total lifetime value is greater than, let's say, 1,000, this is automatically calculated by VBout the moment you start connecting, you connect VBout to WooCommerce or Shopify. So every purchase that comes in, we're going to add the total of the order. So this is how we calculate lifetime value. Okay. If you tell me, Richard, I don't have any e-commerce. I have just my own consultant's business. It's easy. You create a custom field and that custom field can house the amount of purchase of that particular client. Okay. So it doesn't really have to be only e-commerce. And then what I'll do right now, I'll add a, a delay. And then after that, I'll add an email. That could be a thank you. We appreciate the relationship. And here's a free t-shirt. Here's a free um, month membership or whatever it may be. Okay. Any questions? These are the three phases or the four phases of, um, of the funnel. I take a quick pause because this is pretty much most of, of them. The capture, nurture, close, and retain. <clears throat> All right. Now, in terms of analytics, one not have too much into it, but some of the most important metrics we have sent, how many opened clicks and conversions made. These could be tracked through VBout, including SMS web push. So we stack email, SMS, and web push. And obviously, you have certain things like how many clicks per email, how many bounce, complaint, what are your top domains. So we provide you with a lot of KPIs. Uh, and visibility into the performance of your automations. A few other resources here for you, which George will send you the link. Um, we have a lot of, you know, automations and articles and stuff 
there are some some relevant items for you. Six automations for agencies. Um, um, what was that, George? Sorry, I think I removed the copy. No worries. <laughs> this was for SAS. Okay. Uh, and then I have here uh, 10 automated workflows for e-commerce. This one for training and education, five automated workflows for hospitality uh, and for health and fitness. This is great. <laughs> yeah, so we'll send we you this presentation and um, you know, feel free to recycle some of this content, however you feel. All right, guys, we'll take some intros. I know we spilled over, but as long as the content was relevant, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, I usually do intros at the end, just to kind of understand who's on the call and what you do. And I do believe we have, sorry, I gotta stop my screen. Okay. So we have 27, we're gonna do quick, uh, we're gonna go around quickly. I'm just gonna ask you to share your name and company and just a brief 10 second pitch. I can start with you, Eric, Eric Cook. You're gonna make me go first, huh? Always. <laughs> Always. Hey guys, Eric Cook here, um, run an agency based in Northern Michigan with WSI and we focus exclusively on the community banking sector, building websites, digital strategy, and teaching bankers how to engage online. Um, I was a banker for 15 years, so I get all the compliance and security stuff. So it's been a really good fit for us. Been doing this since 2007, and prior to that, was a banker for 15 years. And I think that was just a little over 10 seconds. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. There you go. All right, we got Tony, Tony Marcosi. Hey, hey, Richard. Um, I found you guys on uh, AppSumo today. I uh, started a little chat and, uh, and here I am. Um, I, I, I'm a founder of a consultancy uh, focused on cybersecurity, uh, mid-market in, in, in the Southwest. I'm based in Phoenix. So thanks for your call today. This is awesome. Awesome. Welcome, Tony. We've got ADA Comply Guys. Sorry, I don't have your name. <laughs> oh, it, it's long. It's on there. It's, it's Tony Caggiano. All right. How's everyone doing? Uh, my name is Tony Caggiano. I'm also known as the ADA Comply Guy. And um, <laughs> my agency, we actually work with um, businesses to make people aware of the ADA regulations now with um, business websites and funnels. Um, and we have our own software to help make uh, sites ADA compliant. Um, but we also go the extra mile to help our clients um, benefit from the tax credits and grants uh, we have working with a foundation uh, called the WAAF, the Web um, Accessibility Awareness Foundation to get grants as well to cover the costs for um, not only our software and our solution to become compliant with the ADA, but also to cover expenses for other online marketing tools like your website hosting and even things like Bebout. Um, so awesome. uh, if you're looking for extra money for your business for marketing, uh, let me know and I'd be happy to help you become compliant and get some free money. Awesome. Well, here we go, guys. You, you just made a few, few dollars here. By the way, if you haven't left your contact information in the chat, please go ahead and do so. We're going to be circulating this transcript afterwards. So leave your info, LinkedIn, email, name, company, and so on. Thanks, um, thanks, Tony. You're welcome. We have jo Johnny Drinkwater. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. My background is programming. I've been doing it for 40 years, so I'm not too good just yet. Uh, but the main reason for looking at your product is I have a program with Toastmasters International. Mm -hmm. uh, Toastmasters has 300,000 members. We have 150 clubs here in the south of England, and we're working to automate their club registration features because they're just not, they can never get enough effort in to, to do it properly. So we're looking to provide an automated service for them, and your platform seems a really good fit. Perfect. Thank you, John. Uh, uh, whatever we can help, I think that's a great opportunity for sure. <clears throat> All right, we got Carla Torres. Hey, Carla. Hey, Richard. Thank you for uh, the, the meeting. It was really thoughtful. And uh, I'm based in Mexico City, and we are just starting to use uh, marketing automation with them. Um, uh, we're defining with Sharespring or Vibout. So I'll hope I can figure that out. 
whatever we can help you make a decision. Obviously, we are very good on the marketing stack. Uh, you have a team and we haven't been acquired. So we have, uh, don't expect spikes in pricing and um, handovers. So happy here to, to work with you if you need additional resources. Thank you, um, Richard. Sure, we got Ben, hey, Ben. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, yeah, Ben Cummings here. I own a digital agency called Sales Rev, and we are based out of Denver, Colorado. I'm actually from uh, Lower Michigan. I know, I think it was uh, Eric, you're from Upper Michigan. So he hello, fellow Michigander. Uh, but yeah, we basically use VBout and uh, the agency model. I've been uh, coming up on a year now uh, working with VBout, and they've been amazing, um, helping our clients simplify and streamline their sales and marketing. Um, to drive profitable revenue. So it's been awesome working with the VBOT team. Um, can definitely vouch their support is amazing if uh, if you're looking to try them out. And uh, yeah, appreciate all they do. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you, Ben. Always refreshing to hear you uh, on these calls. Uh, we got Mark uh, Delville. Sorry if I butchered your name, Mark. That's okay, it's Delville. Uh, I'm Mark Delville. I, I do consulting. I've been in the marketing space for some time, started an agency, and I'm currently uh, working with a number of crypto uh, currency projects and looking for a way to kind of um, get some eyes on their specific projects. So really specific to the uh, crypto industry right now. And uh, VBelt seems to be a really good fit for one of my clients that I have, and I'm looking forward to diving in even more. I, I purchased it yesterday on, on Sumo and um, just looking to get some more information and get a, a handle on it. So it looks great so far. Awesome, welcome boy. Thanks. We got Tom Ballard, hey Tom. Uh, gotta unmute. So uh, how's it going? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, one of the AppSumo people too. So I'm, uh, I've heard good things about you guys. So I'm looking forward to, to giving it a spin and thanks so much for your presentation. That was very informative. So uh, it's always good to see the, the automations because I get, Lost in the funnel sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Tom. Uh, we got Tony Marcozzi. Hey, Tony. Richard, you already got me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. All good, I brother. The system, I can go again if you want. The system just shuffles you around. I'm sorry, man. All right, we, we move on to Kelly. Hey, Kels. Hey there, everyone. Hey, Richard. So um, what I've been doing for the past a little over two years is actually sales. My background is in marketing and I tried to venture out into sales. I realized sales is not exactly where I want to be. So I joined this call so I could have a refresher in marketing automation and uh, hopefully get back into marketing, which is my sweet spot. Awesome. Welcome back, Kelly. <laughs> Thanks. All right, we have Bob Rogers. Hey, Bob. Okay, going once, Bob, you're muted. Okay, we got Madison Barner. Hey, Madison. Hello, everyone. My name's Madison. I work with Eric um, Cook. So his intro doubles as mine. Um, we work in the community banking industry and um, we, I, also run our side company called the linked banker and i'm the brand uh, manager over there so awesome. thank you so much for the webinar thank you for joining us we have noriaki murao hey noriaki going once noriaki okay got sergio pruski Sergio, you are muted. And Noriaki, if you are able to activate your mic now, we can go. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yes, we can hear Hello. you. Hello. Hi. Uh, Hi. My, name is no my name is Noriaki Murao. The, uh, uh, I'm a founder of the New Life Enterprise. Uh, the, we are the develop the app and they provide the service through the, our apps. So we recently uh, launched the new app named is a Town Walker. Uh, Town Walker basically the, it's uh, providing the virtual tour in New York City. So the New Yorker uh, joined the Town Walker and uh, provide the people from all over the world to the virtual walking tour in New York City. 
Thanks, okay. Noriaki. Put your information in the chat, please, just in case. Oh, okay. we, yeah. 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 Very good. All right, we got Ken Anthony. Hey, Ken. Hey, guys. My name is Ken Anthony. Richard, thanks again. Uh, I'm in the marketing space within fitness and just partnering with organizations that are looking to do event marketing and increase their uh, return on investment within the marketing uh, realm. Welcome aboard, Ken. We have Bobby Fordish. Sorry if I uh, misspelled your last name. Uh, Bobby. Going once. Okay. We got Sverlana. Hey, Sverlana. Sorry, we can't hear you. Okay. Going once. Sverlana. I don't know if you're trying to speak, but you are unmuted, but we still can't hear you. <clears throat> All right, we got John P. John? Uh, yeah, yes, I had, I just got on here maybe five minutes ago. Uh, I had a meeting that ran over. Uh, I just got off another Zoom and it went over, had a lot of uh, 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 questions. But um, my question was, I would love to have seen the, um, the president. I see it's recording. Is there going to be a, is there any way we get the, whatever, you know, the recording yeah. of what you did today? Yes, we will be syndicating that back to the network and you will be, um, you'll be getting a link to the video as well as link to the presentation. Absolutely. Oh, and right. we do run our daily training sessions on VBOT, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, Eastern time. So we can cover two, um, two time slots. Feel free to attend. George will be putting in the demo link so you can join us. Uh, it's an hour and 30 minutes. So it's it's everything you need to learn about VBOUT. Um, not all the agency capabilities, but primarily everything else. Um, so feel free to, to also sign up. I think I covered everyone, right? Did. All right. Just a quick shout out to my team. I have Elsa and George who helps me put this together. Uh, with invites and presentations. It takes a lot. And I appreciate you coming to this call. It actually means that our work is making an impact. Um, so I'll let George uh, go and introduce himself. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is George. I'm the marketing manager of VBOUT. I would like to thank you, everyone, for attending. It means uh, a lot to us. And I'm really happy that you're uh, really participating today, especially that the topic was uh, very interesting for you. In case uh, you know ev everyone else who might be interested in such uh, events, feel free to invite them, uh, especially if they are looking for tips to grow their uh, business. Uh, thank you, everyone, guys, and hope to see you in the next uh, event. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Question. Um, uh, one of my main questions is, um, and I was trying to do some research on you guys, um, mm -hmm. on the company itself, and mm -hmm. when platforms and looking at white labeling, because I'm, I will be, people are building their business on the leadership of, of another company. So just seeing how not stable, you know, because everything rises and falls at leadership at the top, you know, whether or not we just don't know. Um, I don't even know if you guys discussed or shared with, because I've seen all of the team that you do have, but how, what would happen if somebody gets, what if you get mad with, you know, what, how is the company going to stay? Because I'm looking at long-term because, you know, there's solutions out there that, you know, a couple, one other lifetime deal that, I've got one I'm paying monthly for right now, but I just want to see which one I really want to tie my hitch to and move forward. Good question. Yes. Yeah, good question, John. So usually companies go through the risk phase the first two to three years. Usually the first year is the riskiest. Then you have the second and the third is when companies either make it or they don't. Um, we've, been, we've been doing this for about six years now. And have, we have clients since six years, we have clients since three, and we have clients since yesterday. So we're here to stay. We, we are in good shape. Um, and the only thing I can promise you is that we are a startup that's growing and we are hands-on, we are efficient.
Can you guarantee HubSpot will be there tomorrow? There's no guarantee. Maybe somebody will acquire them. They will shut them down. Um, maybe not. So for me, what I can tell you is we have happy clients. Ben is, uh, has been with us for a while, um, for a year now, and we've been pretty consistent with everything from support, uh, pricing, and, and backing. Uh, if we have failed in any of these areas at any given time, I think that's an indication. And because we've been consistent, I think this is, this is all I can give you in terms of guarantees. Um, and okay. the product, again, has been six, seven years in the making. So we're not a yesterday company. Okay. And one other thing. So is, is the end, do you guys, is, when you guys came together, you said, we're going to do this because this is going to be our exit strategy. Is it you doing it to sell it or, or, or you know, it, or is this y'all baby forever for life? We, I know, I don't even know if y'all thought that for you. Like, I get this. Absolutely. I was an agency myself for, um, oh. for the longest 2007. And I used everything in the book and I didn't want to live my life and, you know, it, I, I knew I don't want to be in the service because I saw um, I saw there's a niche market there between the overkills and underkills, and I wanted to branch out to software. Okay. So this, this is this is my baby. We love what we do. Um, could I promise you there will be an exit or not? I don't know. What we're focused on right now is building a solid product with a healthy revenue, happy clients, and that's really our immediate. Uh, we don't have you know any stock uh, obligations and uh, complex shareholders that we got to, you know, show, uh, you know, we're still small in, uh -huh. in that sense, right? Okay. Ver versus billion dollar companies. Um, so this is our long-term plan. That's, uh, that's what it is, John. All right. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, good questions. Uh, all right. We got Elsa. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Elsa, uh, program manager at Vibout and CEO at Classify. And um, I'm very happy to be with you in every monthly meetup. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa. All right. Well, again, very grateful for attending this meetup. We'll be following up with the content. We'll also uh, pick one person. We can work closely with you on your funnels uh, or actually on your automation so we can get my team to get in there and help you out. Uh, we'll be picking somebody after the uh, we'll announce them in the next email uh, so thank you so much guys uh, ladies gentlemen uh, enjoy the rest of the week and we'll see you on the next session thank you thanks richard good seeing you likewise thank you bye bye, -bye. thank you richard have a good sure. one thank you